Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Counting down to our first big winter snow of the season. Several inches of snow expected in southeast Michigan, but it's not likely to be evenly distributed. Yeah. <laughs> Snow, freezing rain, sleet, it's all on the table this coming weekend. Well, there are several ways that this one could cause trouble. Kim Adams tracking all these different possibilities. Kim. Well, right now, I just want to explain the winter storm watch. That's everywhere you see in blue. And if you live in Oakland and Washtenaw counties, you have been added to this. This is new today, 10 a.m. Friday to 1 p.m. Saturday. Now, you might be asking, why not Macomb, Wayne, and Monroe? It's because the track of this rain-snow line and when we will get the rain, how much rain, and how long it will last is still in question because if it shifts a little to the east, we're talking 20, 30 miles, there will be higher totals on the east side. But National Weather Service is going with what we know right now, which is these areas have the potential for six or more inches of snow, which meets the criteria for a winter storm. Watch six inches of snow or more in a six to nine hour period, which it will be tomorrow. And it can be in combination with rain, freezing rain and sleet. So we will likely get something for the east side, including the city of Detroit, in the next 12 hours, but we're just kind of waiting for the National Weather Service to issue whatever they're going to issue, whether it's a winter weather advisory, winter storm watch, we will certainly let you know. As of right now, winter storm watch has now turned to a warning west, including Lansing, all the way up to the UP and all the way over to Grand Rapids. Anywhere you see in pink could have blizzard conditions. So if you usually knock off work on a Friday and head up north, tomorrow is not the day to do it. It is going to be near or at whiteout conditions. Around here, I will break down the timeline and what we're expecting and when coming up in the forecast. All right, Kim, a lot of work that's already being done to try to prepare the roads for what's coming. Craig Bryson of the Road Commission for Oakland County tells our Megan Woods they're ready to roll. We've been working around the clock. We've had the freezing rain. We've had a little bit of snow here and there. That kind of stuff creates icy conditions, and we have to be out salting. So to, for the safety of the public, we've been out 24 hours a day for the last two days straight. The thing we can do is try to get our, make sure of all our trucks are working, our mechanics are trying to get them ready. Um, our crews are actually out doing their regular work today. They'll go home at the end of the shift. They'll come back in tomorrow, and then we'll work for you know probably 16-hour shifts starting uh, tomorrow. Uh, but, I mean, we're ready to go 24-7 this time of year for these types of things. There isn't a lot of prep that we need to do in advance of a storm like this. And as DTE prepares for the possibility of power outages due to the storm, they're sharing some important safety guidance. If you see a downed line, always, always consider it to be live and dangerous. Stay 25 feet or the length of a bus away from it. Don't touch anything that may be in contact with a line. Report it immediately through the DTE app or by calling 800 477 4747. Also, DTE wants to remind everyone if the power does go out, don't use a portable generator indoors as the carbon monoxide fumes can be deadly. We have sadly too often reported on that problem. If you are going to want to keep your, uh, you are certainly going to want to keep your eye uh, on the weather, so you need to keep your eye on the Forewarn Weather app as the storm moves through. You can download it, it is free. Just search in your app store for WDIV. All right, some breaking news involving the Detroit Auto Show and a change many people have been calling for. The event will once again be held in January. That's going to start in 2025, returning to the month we were all used to having it before, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic forced to move it to summertime. The next installment of the Auto Show will be just about one year from now. Charity preview is set for January 10th. 2025, so a year from yesterday at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. Yeah. All right, some other news tonight. A well-known local rapper is facing murder charges in what investigators believe to be a horrific instance of domestic violence. The victim is Kelly Mays, a well-known survivor of domestic violence who found her voice helping others suffering through abusive relationships at home. Accused of killing her is Jimmy Lee Brown, a rap artist known as Supa MC, who appeared in the movie Eight Mile. Sean Lay, live in Highland Park tonight with more on a terribly disturbing case. Sean. 
incredibly disturbing. The loss of Kelly Mays really sending shockwaves, Devin and Kimberly, throughout the community right now. We've had Kelly Mays on Local 4 News, such a strong advocate and voice for domestic violence survivors. She is a was a survivor herself working in the Speaker's Bureau for Haven, the group that advocates for domestic violence victims. Family tells us she married Jimmy Brown. He's memorialized here in a mural in Highland Park. He's from Highland Park, Supa MC. He's now charged with slashing her to death inside her own apartment on Sunday. His rap name, Supa MC from Highland Park. His image included on this mural here just off Woodward Avenue in HP. But today, another look at the face of Supa MC, his real name, Jimmy Lee Brown. This is his booking photo. Brown is charged with murder. The victim, prosecutors tell us, Brown's girlfriend, Kelly Mays. Mays, a well-known domestic violence survivor, activist, speaker, and poet. They say laughter is the best medicine. If I keep laughing, maybe I'll be cured. Mays' life taken in a horrific instance of domestic violence inside her Westland apartment this past Sunday. Mays was found slashed to death. Deep lacerations, multiple lacerations to her neck and to her chest. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office says Supa MC, Jimmy Lee Brown, Mays' boyfriend, allegedly attacked Mays with a knife, killed her and ran from the apartment, turning himself in at the Westland Police Department a short time later. Kelly Mays volunteered with the group Haven in its Speakers Bureau. Haven, a local resource that provides important outreach to domestic violence victims. Haven CEO Christine Kynel said a short time ago that they are heartbroken. A beautiful poet, survivor, advocate and mother and a truly beautiful soul, Kelly Ann Mays played a significant role in touching the lives of those she's encountered. Local force Paula Tutman was with Supa MC this past summer as he shared his story of struggling to recover from a car accident that left him with memory loss. Back here live, no bond right now. Jimmy Brown, James Brown, the family says, uh, being held without bond in the Wayne County Jail. We're going to connect with Haven tonight, guys, learn more about Kelly and her important voice here. Such a tragedy. Family tells us just a short time ago that she had been using the courts and doing the right things to try to separate him, herself and protect herself from her husband. And we know the result right now. So uh, domestic violence help. We're going to put the hotlines for National Domestic Violence Helpline on our website, click on Detroit.com. Also, Haven's uh, number as well if you're in a situation or know someone who needs to make that call. Back to you. Yeah. Terrible. All right, Sean. The Air Force just gave Selfridge Air National Guard Base a big New Year's present. A new squadron of planes is heading to Macomb, securing Selfridge's future for the next several decades. Our Mar McDonald is live there tonight. And Mar, I know this has been an all hands on deck effort to secure that squadron. Kimberly, you got it. I mean, what a great night for Selfridge. And it's one of those rare instances where you don't have any partisan bickering. You had the entire congressional delegation, the governor, county government here in Macomb, all rowing in the same direction. Boy, it paid off. Selfridge is integral to not just Macomb's economy, but to Southeast Michigan. However, in recent years, the Air Force has been slimming down, and the A-10 Warthog is being phased out, which is based at Selfridge, and the KC-135 is being retired as well. County Executive Mark Hackle raised the alarm years ago, pushing for a new fighter mission for Selfridge. The county, along with the state's congressional delegation and governor, have been lobbying hard for a new mission to keep the base up and running, a key component to the defense contractor corridor Macomb enjoys. Well, today, after aggressively lobbying the Air Force, Selfridge got a big kiss. A new mission of KC-46A refueling aircraft are headed to Selfridge, a full squadron of 12 planes. We know that there are 10 states, there were 10 states aggressively uh, working to try to get those KC-46s at their bases. So uh, with 10 states working aggressively and only two squadrons, uh, we went over time trying to get this commitment. And today we know we're now getting one of those two squadrons. Senator Peters obviously thrilled about the news today, but that doesn't mean that with this squadron coming here, that our congressional delegation isn't still trying to land a fighter mission as well. We're live at Selfridge tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah. Okay, Mara, thank you. The splintered Republican Party continues its internal battle tonight. It looks like it could be headed to court. One group voted to remove state party chair Christina Caramo from office, but she is refusing to accept that as a binding decision. Both sides moving to end this battle as the presidential election season heats up. Rod Maloney live downtown tonight with the latest on a very strange schism, Rod. 
Well, nobody's listening to the other in this particular point. Christina Caramo claims the chair, and she says this weekend in Houghton Lake, she's going to hold a special meeting and solve the whole problem. The other side saying, no, you're not. In fact, we need a judge to get involved. Last weekend at a Commerce Township meeting house, one side of the Republican Party committee voted out Karamo. Saying that meeting wasn't legal, this weekend Karamo will hold her own special Republican Party committee meeting where she seeks a confidence vote. I have decided to put myself up for a vote to settle the dispute. Last night, rival co-chair Melina Pago, who now claims the Republican Party chair but says she doesn't really want it, put out a press release saying she's canceling the meeting due to bad weather and called it an unofficial gathering anyway. Karamo replied... What I can't tolerate... Um, is the division and dissension. So we've decided in order to settle the matter, the committee will settle the dispute uh, that is currently happening. Not so fast, says Warren Carpenter, a Republican delegate leading the anti-Karamo effort. He said it's time to bring in the lawyers. The party uh, has decided to move forward with litigation um, and uh, are seeking a temporary injunction to freeze all assets of the party and the party's ability to do business. He promises the legal filing in the next few days, saying the party cannot succeed in its present state of disarray. I'm trying to win elections against Democrats. I'm not trying to, to castigate and demonize people that are standing shoulder to shoulder with me and claim to be Republicans. Yet for the day's shocker, here's a different solution. What would happen if you didn't get that vote of confidence? Then I would step aside as chair. Just to be clear, if you didn't hear that, Karamo told me that if, in fact, she were to lose that vote in this weekend's meeting, that she would step aside as chair. In the meantime, press releases going back and forth, one claiming one thing, one canceling the other, continue to go on. If they have snow up north this weekend, which we're supposed to uh, get, uh, they can go to a remote meeting. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney, local. What a strange trip this has been. All right, Rod. Five downriver communities are looking to redevelop the land along the Detroit River, and they want your input. Ecorse, River Rouge, Trenton, Riverview, and Wyandotte are planning makeovers at old industrial sites along the Jefferson Avenue corridor. The Downriver Community Conference has a grant to make this a reality. Today on the Daily Plus, officials told Christy McDonald they're holding open houses next week to talk to the community. We've hired a uh, consultant to, to help us in that process, and we've been doing some information gathering and looking across the corridor with those five cities. You know, they all have their own plans and policies in place, so we're kind of trying to zoom out a little bit and look at this region as a core. And meetings are being held Tuesday night at the E-Course Council Chambers and Wednesday night at the Riverview Community Center.